Thank you for your interest in learning about how to get involved with the Hyperledger community. As an open source community, we want you to get involved. Open source communities thrive when people like you show up and choose to collaborate with other people who have a similar interest or some similar passion. So today we are gonna to talk about why you may wanna get involved in open source projects, how to participate in the Hyperledger community and how to become a community leader. So why get involved? We hear many different reasons from people in the community and here are a few. One is contributing to open source looks great on your resume and shows that you have experience. You know, It shows that you have expertise in a given set of technologies and that you understand how open source development processes work and everything in the community that you do is public and transparent and you can share that with somebody uh, as a demonstration of your skills and expertise. Another thing is that if you're using the Hyperledger projects and you want it to do a certain thing, you can decrease the time to market and accelerate the work of that project. If there's something on the roadmap and you want it to come sooner, well, you can help You can help make that happen. You can contribute and put that you know new functionality together sooner, you know, and that will go quicker than if you hadn't shown up and helped make that happen. Another thing that's very important is that if you're using a piece of open source software, make sure that you contribute so it stays active. If everybody, as you can imagine, if everybody who uses a piece of open source code only used it and didn't contribute to it, then nobody's contributing to it and that project is no longer active. So if you rely on a project, really consider is there some way that you can help contribute to it. Another thing is you can drive adoption of your project product based on the open source code base. If there's some code related to what you're doing that you may want to open, that would you know, bring it to a bigger audience. They can look at what you're doing and then look at what else you're doing, uh, you know, based on the open source project that you're doing and then look at what, uh, you know, the products and other things that you're working on. You can also tap into a worldwide group of people who are interested and want to help. There are people all around the world who may be trying to solve a similar challenge to what you're doing or wanting to create, you know, a similar piece of functionality to what, to what you're doing. And you can find and connect with and work with those people in a community. And then lastly, you can shape the direction of a project to fit your needs and use cases. An open source project is determined by who shows up and contributes. So the direction that a project goes in is, you know, what those project members, what the members of those projects do. So you can certainly shape the direction of the Hyperledger community if you think it should be going in a certain direction by contributing. So how to participate. If you're new to open source communities, it can be a little confusing. So here's a few good initial steps to consider. One is feel free to lurk. You know, there's no obligation to start contributing and start taking part in discussions right away. We recommend that you just kind of join some of these channels, go to a community call, get on our chat server and just kind of familiarize yourself with what are people talking about? What are the, you know, the projects they're tackling? What are people, you know, interested in? And then that gives you an entry point. You can say, hey, I'm interested in this too, and then start talking with people. Also, don't wait for an invitation. Everything in the community is open by default. You can jump into a call, you can jump into a channel. You don't have to have somebody from that call, you know, from that channel invite you in. Just if you're interested in something, show up, ask questions and share ideas. And lastly, you can read our code of conduct. We set and enforce high standards of professional practice because it's very important for us that everybody who chooses to get involved in the community have a positive experience when doing so. So please, if you're curious about you know, our code of conduct, it's public, you can take a look at it. And I know I just said that you don't need an invitation to get involved in an open source community, but we want you to feel welcome and we want you to feel invited. So, you know, you don't need an invitation, but we're happy to extend one. So please, if you're interested in anything that's going on in the community, you know, you are invited to take part in that. There are a lot of great resources online about how to get involved with open source communities. These are some of them. Uh, you can feel free to take a look at those. Hyperledger also has a lot of Hyperledger specific information available. So for example, we have online self-paced training courses. We run online and in-person workshops throughout the year. All of our projects also have tutorials about how can you use the projects, understand the projects, contribute to the projects. So all this information publicly available, you can go to hyperledger.org and find the links to those. Um, so feel free to start there. That is a good place to get started. And then another way to learn about what's going on with the projects is really to talk to the people creating these different tools, creating these different projects. You know, in a community, you have direct access to the people who are doing all this work, who are creating the projects and using these projects. So you can get involved 
and connect with those people. A great way to do that is through our meetup program. We have over 180 meetup groups in 80 countries around the world. And very often we have the maintainers of projects and people doing interesting things with the projects going and sharing their knowledge and sharing their expertise in these, you know, meetup events. So uh, um, if you want to get involved, please do so. The meetups happen both in person and virtually. So you can attend a meetup. You're also welcome to speak at a meetup. If you want to talk about the work that you're doing with Hyperledger, you're certainly welcome to do so. And you can organize a meetup in your area. Maybe there's not a meetup group in your area and you'd like to start one. Or maybe there is a group, but it's not currently active. You're welcome to restart activities there. And this is a great contribution opportunity for people who maybe aren't necessarily technical. You know, you don't have to be a developer to contribute to Hyperledger. And organizing meetups is one way that you can get involved without being a developer. So check out our meetups. And if you have questions, feel free to email us at meetup at hyperledger.org. We also have regional chapters. These are groups around the world in different regions who help connect with people in those areas. We often see these groups uh, you know, doing activities in languages other than English, right? Because we're a worldwide community. Not everybody speaks English or wants to speak English. So you can see here we have, for example, very active regional chapters in Japan and India and Latin America and Brazil. So these groups do activities in Japanese or Portuguese or Spanish. So if that's something that you're interested in, feel free to check out our chapters. And then, as I mentioned, we have tools where you can connect with people. We use Discord for our chat server. We have mailing lists. We use Zoom for our community calls. All these are open. You're welcome to get involved. And this image here is an example of uh, um, a conversation going on on our Discord server. And then once you're familiar with the community, you understand what it is that you want to do. I'll just say a few words about how do you contribute code and documentation. One, you want to sign up for a free Linux Foundation account. This will give you access to all the tools that we use in the community. And then once you have that access, you can start interacting with our tools. You know, check out our code, check out our bug database, submit bugs, you know, uh, um, you know, read through our documentation, contribute to our wiki. These are all available and you have access to these uh, um, as somebody who wants to get involved in the community. And in terms of the exact steps to follow to contribute code to an existing project, each project, each lab is a little bit different, but you know, this is a general overview of the steps. But I would say it's step one, all in all cases, is to check out the contributing guide. Each project, each lab has information about what are the steps you can take to contribute to that effort. So take a look there. That's a good place to start. Uh, um, but it will generally follow this pattern. And then be aware, you don't just have to limit yourself to contributing to existing efforts, right? If you see something that you want to do that's not been done yet, start a new effort, right? Every single project, every single lab that you see right now in the community today has been started by somebody who said, hey, this is something that I want to do. I want to collaborate with others. I think this is important for Hyperledger to be doing this. And they started a new effort, right? So Hyperledger Labs is where we have a very easy place to get started to get something going. And then we've seen many of our Hyperledger projects start out as a lab. So you can start a lab, start growing a community around it, really start the development of that. And then as that gains traction and gains a lot of interest, then you can look at how do you submit a proposal to turn that into an official Hyperledger project. And then, as I said earlier, you know, you can get involved into the community in a number of different ways. You don't have to be a developer. Another way to get involved without being a developer is to look at how can you help us contribute to documentation and the translation of documentation for different projects. You know, you can have the best projects in the world, but if there is no documentation for those, people don't know how to use it, right? So documentation translation is very important. How do you help give information to people about how do you use the different projects in the community. So this is, a, again, a very different, a very, you know, different way to contribute than doing development, but it's also very critical that people do documentation and translation. Beyond the different projects, we also have special interest groups. Our special interest groups are places where people come together to collaborate on how are these technologies being adopted in different industries. So you can see here on this slide, there's a number of different special interest groups we're showing. There's telecom, climate action, healthcare. These are just some of the different groups. We also have, for example, a supply chain group. So a number of different groups. If you're interested in specific use cases or how blockchain and distributed ledger technologies are being deployed and adopted in a given industry, check out our special interest groups. We're happy to have you get involved. And just like the projects, they're set up in a similar way. 
All these SIGs have mailing lists or chat channels that are public that you can join. There's regular calls that you can join. All this information is available on the Hyperledger Wiki. You can go to wiki.hyperledger.org and find the information. And then lastly, once you're contributing, if you also want to take the next step and then become a leader in the community, absolutely, we, we would certainly encourage you to do so. And as I said earlier, that is a main reason that some people choose to get involved in, in a community. So we did want to spend a few minutes talking about how you can be one of the people who are leading the Hyperledger community. There's a number of different roles that you may want to consider. One is to become a project maintainer. These are the people in a project who's setting the roadmap and the direction of the project. They're also reviewing all the contributions that come in and determine what contributions get merged and become a part of that project. And the way to become a maintainer is to start contributing. Get involved in the project, demonstrate that you understand what's going on with the project by making contributions that get accepted by existing maintainers, start building relationships with those existing maintainers. And then over time, as you've demonstrated that you understand what's going on with the project and you've made you know, a set of contributions that people can look at and say, yes, this person has the expertise they need to be a maintainer, you'll have an opportunity to then take on that maintainer role. You're also welcome to run in our annual election for the Technical Oversight Committee. The Technical Oversight Committee is the group of community members who oversee the governance of the community. They make decisions throughout the year about how the community will be governed. Um, and if you're interested in this, this is something that's available. Anybody who's actively involved in the community can run in our election each year. So take a look at you know, our channels. We'll communicate when the election's coming up. We'll communicate about that. You can sign up to the TOC mailing list, for example. And then when people choose to run, the active community members will then vote for those people to be elected. So, But even if you're not on the Technical Oversight Committee yet, you can still get involved with the governance of the community. These, just like all our other calls, are run as public calls, and you're welcome to get involved and join the discussion there. Our special interest groups are, you know, run just like our other efforts, you know, uh, um, led by community members. If you want to get involved, just like becoming a project maintainer, I would say the steps are get involved in a SIG that you're interested in, start participating, find ways that you can help out with what that SIG is doing, start contributing, start forming relationships with other people in that group. And then over time, leadership opportunities in that group will show up. And you're certainly welcome to become a leader in your local community. As I said earlier, we have meetup groups all around the world. If you want to be somebody who's bringing Hyperledger to people near you, we would love to work with you on that. You can become a Hyperledger meetup organizer. Maybe there's a meetup group in your area. You can join that and start getting involved as a leader. Or maybe there's not a meetup group in your area. You can start a new group and get involved that way. And the same with a chapter. If you want to bring people to, you know, in your region into the Hyperledger community, help them understand how the community works and, and what's going on and how to get involved, we would be happy to work with you either on leading an existing regional chapter or maybe starting a new one. So if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to ask at info at hyperledger.org. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. And we're looking forward to seeing you in the community. So thank you.